Hey guys, and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we'll be talking about Rye syndrome. So let's get started. So what is Rye syndrome? Rye syndrome is a somewhat uncommon disorder that causes brain and liver damage. It is most often seen in children and usually occurs after they've had a recent viral infection, such as the chickenpox or the flu. So if we take a closer look at this picture at the bottom of my screen, we see that it says Rye syndrome is a progressive encephalopathy with hepatic dysfunction. And this usually occurs after a varicella or influenza A or B infection. So another thing that needs to be mentioned is that there's a risk factor involved with the development of Rye syndrome and that is a salicylate use. So any sort of aspirin is considered a risk factor for the development of Rye syndrome. So we see in patients who are infected with one of these viruses, if they do go on to take aspirin, several days after their recovery from their chickenpox or flu virus, we will have fulminant hepatitis and cerebral edema, which will cause altered levels of consciousness for the patient, as well as behavioral changes. So the most two commonly affected organs in these patients is the brain and the liver. So now let's talk about the causes of Rye syndrome. So the majority of cases of the disease remain unknown. However, there does seem to be a trend which shows that it can be triggered when people treat a viral infection with aspirin. Other patients may also develop the disease if they have a disorder that affects how their bodies break down fatty acids, or if they've been exposed to certain toxins, which include paint thinners and products to kill insects and weeds, so pesticides and insecticides, exposure, as well as a fatty acid metabolism disorder can also lead to the development of a Rye syndrome. But the most commonly known trigger for the disease is usually the treatment of aspirin for a viral infection, such as chickenpox or the influenza virus. So now let's talk about the pathophysiology of Rye syndrome. So when Rye syndrome strikes, the cells throughout the body become swollen and build up fats. In turn, the patient's blood sugar levels will drop and ammonia and acid levels in the patient's blood will rise. These changes can hit many organs, such as the brain and the liver, where severe swelling can occur. So here again in this picture on my right, we see the salicylate use together with the viral infection will lead to Rye syndrome and the patient will suffer a fulminant hepatitis, which means the inflammation and swelling of the liver, as well as the swelling of the brain. So we will have a cerebral edema, and that'll affect the patient quite intensely, because now when the brain is swollen, we have altered levels of consciousness and multiple behavioral changes. So what are the signs and symptoms of Rye syndrome? So the signs and symptoms of Rye syndrome usually start three to five days after the onset of the viral infection. In patients who are younger than two, early symptoms usually include diarrhea and rapid breathing. In older children and in teenagers, the early symptoms may include ongoing vomiting and unusual sleepiness. And other signs and symptoms of Rye syndrome include personality changes. The patients tend to be more irritable and aggressive. They will suffer from confusion and hallucinations, weakness or inability to move their arms or legs, seizures and convulsions, extreme tiredness, and loss of consciousness. And this is all due to the cerebral edema. So how can one go about diagnosing Rye syndrome? The diagnostic criteria for Rye syndrome includes an acute non-inflammatory encephalopathy with an altered level of consciousness. We will also have hepatic dysfunction with a liver biopsy showing fatty metamorphosis or a more than a threefold increase in ALT or alanine aminotransferase, aspartate aminotransferase or AST and the ammonia levels. So again, if we have the fulminant hepatitis, we're going to have these liver enzymes which will increase in the blood. Another criteria will be no other explanation for the cerebral edema or hepatic abnormality. So this means ruling out other causes that may contribute to the development of a hepatic or cerebral abnormality. The CSF or cerebral spinal fluid will also have white blood cells which are eight per millimeter cubed or fewer. And the brain biopsy will show cerebral edema without inflammation. And in this picture on my right, we have the histopathological aspect of an autopsy liver biopsy specimen from a child who actually died from Rye syndrome. 
and the hepatocytes are actually pale staining due to the intracellular fat droplets. So because we'll have this hepatic dysfunction with a fatty metamorphosis occurring in the liver, this can be used to diagnose Rye syndrome. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of Rye syndrome. So Rye syndrome is a serious condition and can be a medical emergency, so early treatment and hospitalization is essential. Medications often used to treat Rye syndrome include insulin, and this will increase the glucose metabolism, corticosteroids to reduce the brain swelling, diuretics to get rid of the excess fluid, and this is done by increasing the fluid loss through urination, and the diuretics are useful because they decrease the intracranial pressure. We can also use medications to prevent bleeding, and bleeding due to liver abnormalities may require treatment with vitamin K, plasma, and platelets. So the liver has multiple responsibilities. It's involved in coagulation and clotting. So when the liver is affected or we have a fulminant hepatitis, we're gonna have a problem in preventing bleeding. So that's why we can supplement these patients with vitamin K, plasma, and platelets. We can also use cooling blankets, and this intervention helps maintain the internal body temperature at a safe level. And if the patient has trouble breathing, he may need assistance from a breathing machine, which is called a ventilator. And that brings us to the end of this video on Rye Syndrome. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. If you would like to download a copy of the presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.